Hi, everyone, and welcome to this uh, new video uh, about SECO. I am Marco Parisi, head of IR. Today, I have a guest with me, uh, Dario Freddi, the CEO of uh, SECO Mind, our uh, IoT and artificial intelligence uh, branch. Hello, Dario. How are you doing? Hey, Marco. How are you doing? Pretty good here. Very good. So, Dario, um, let us understand today a bit more, uh, let's say, about uh, what's going on uh, today in terms of digitalization, uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, there's a lot of talking about uh, uh, data analytics, smart devices, but how big this market is and what's the opportunity for a company to leverage AI? Let us financial practitioners um, understand this. Yeah, so first of all, we don't have so much time because this question could have an answer which is days long. And uh, I mean, when you talk about uh, digitalization and in general, what is happening in the connected devices and artificial intelligence space, uh, we need to take a few steps backwards. I mean, this is nothing new. And this is very important to say because all of these trends have started uh, years and years ago and simply have impacted different segments and different verticals than the ones we're talking about today and the ones the SECO is in. So if we look backwards, I mean, I always like to say that the, 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 the mobile market was always uh, several steps ahead of the industry. And, and I believe that what we're seeing today in the industrial market or in the embedded market, as we like to call it, um, is nothing but uh, the very same thing that has happened before uh, for the mobile market and consumer users. Uh, what is it? Basically, it is turning products into services. And I always like to make an example, right? Because to me, innovation is always about uh, uh, innovating processes more than the technology itself. Let's take the calculator. Why would you ask me why about the calculator? Because you will never put a calculator in your hand or in your pocket and you will never go around with a calculator. But if you need to do some math, a calculator will be handy. Well, guess what? If I ask you this question 20 years ago, maybe, maybe more, you will have told me, well, I don't have a calculator with me, but guess what? Everybody who's, see who's seeing this video right now has a calculator in his pocket. Why? Because simply the processes that we built allow you to have that as a service. Now, this is a very, very adherent example. If you think about what is the transformation that we're looking at today in the embedded device space and in the connected device space, you will not have thought about paying your coffee with your cell phone a few years ago. You will not have thought about doing a lot of things that today are not. So where are we? We are basically diving in a continuous innovating world in which services are evolving as we speak and services are being created as we speak. The challenge today is not asking ourselves how big is the market because the market is so big, it is very hard to size. The total addressable market that we're talking about is potentially every single device that is used for non-consumer purposes or even for consumer purposes. Think about your oven, think about, uh, think about your vacuum cleaner, think about anything you have in your house that runs some electronics on board. You expect them to be connected today. So the total addressable market is literally everything you see around you that has some electronics in it. But where does it go? Nobody has the, uh, has the answer. What we can say though, is that the trend by which we look at this market is that these devices will need to become smarter and smarter as demand evolves. I mean, the usual counter argument is uh, IoT is old, AI is already, let's say on the downward trend, but the reality is that we are just at the beginning. And why do I say that? Because as much as it is true that a lot of devices are already connected, not all of them, actually just a very small portion of them are currently capable of providing smart services as we intend them. So doing something active and proactive for you. And if in the consumer world, we start seeing a trend that makes some sense, if you look at the industry, which is our primary market we address at SECO, that is literally just in its early days, apart from some companies that have been thinking very much ahead or are very much ahead in this revolution. But if you look at the state of the market, it's still quite a blue ocean, if you ask. So where is it going? It is going in a direction in which we see a steady growth in the market beyond what SECO is doing. Uh, Gartner says it, every analyst is saying that. And most of all, um, the difference in the value chain that all of this is being uh, is, is actually asking for is changing radically as we speak. I mean, um, 
if we look backwards, um, five years ago, when I still was in this market, um, there was a very big proliferation of uh, different hardware vendors, different ISBs, different companies providing IT services. There was the whole cloud deal that was still, let's say, in process. And there was a lot of confusion. So companies who wanted to invest needed to go to different partners, pull them all together and make something out of it. And sometimes they didn't even think about the business model because technology was such a challenge. But of course, you will solve the technological problem first. Now, the shift that we see is that as technology evolves, as we are more capable of offering all, all around services, and, and Seco, let me say, it's a big pioneer in that sense because we are really pulling together everything that makes sense in this value chain. Companies now are starting to look for partners who can take them by the hand and walk them into this world and make it so that they have the technology, the business model, and everything delivered on time and with the right price tag. Because that is really what is making the difference. And if you ask me what is going to be the driver for this trend to evolve, I truly believe it's going to be the capability of companies to get services exactly in the way I just described. So that's also why I think we are really a key player in this space, because if you look at our vision and if you look at the state of the market, I really think we kind of pull together the right threads to make it happen for those companies who need today these kind of services on top of the devices. That's great. And let's say from what you said, I would have five or six uh, questions coming to my mind, but let's say, let's start from, from one very important point you mentioned, which is uh, um, talking about the customer benefits. I mean, it's not just about, uh, let's say, adopting the latest technologies for the sake of it, but for the real benefits that they can have on the business of the customers. And so this sounds more like a conversation you may have with a C-level rather than the R&T department, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, Marco, you know me. I'm a technology person. I'm all about technology. But when it comes to what you're saying, uh, reality is that when it comes to a company, this is more of a strategy discussion. I mean, um, let, me expand, let me expand on this, right? Uh, technology is our job. It's Seco's job. At Seco, we build amazing technology. I think we do it very well. I think we have amazing pieces of technology. And the reason why people come and buy and come and use our technology is because they don't want to make it themselves. Why would you ask? Because it is super expensive. It doesn't scale with the cost of your product. And most of all, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. I mean, one of the main reasons why we are successful is that we operate in so many different verticals and we can reapply the very same concept and the very same technology, which is then completely battle tested on the ground on so many different customers that will not have the means or even the money to invest to make it happen by themselves. This has been something that has happened in the IT world since I, as long as I can remember. Now, of course, if you, if you pull together the threads that I mentioned before, it is obviously a discussion that is for the C-level and for the management, because we are not talking about technological advancement in your product. I mean, of course we are, but it's not for the sake of it. It is for the sake of changing the way you do business. You were asking me how companies are, can benefit out of this, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. So what will be your first answer, for example? Let's try you. Let's, let's reverse the table. What will you answer to that? <laughs> let's say i would say i want to cut my cost i want to optimize my cost i want to increase my revenue yeah i mean cut, cutting cost generic. is usually the yeah i mean the, the, the usual argument is always cutting the cost right and it, it is a very sound argument because uh, i mean the the first use case for ai was uh, telling you i mean giving you insights for making decisions so helping you in making your daily decisions at, at, as a C-level, as an executive, but also, of course, to find ways by which you can cut your cost. But I mean, I think this is not an argument which is sound enough to drive a transformation unless you're cutting costs by a mile. I think that is, there is another very different argument that you mentioned, which is increasing revenue. Because when you look at servitization, it all starts with a service that you can provide to your users. And I don't think it's just about increasing revenues. I think it's all about changing the way these revenues are built. Today, product companies will sell you the oven, will sell you the vacuum cleaner, and will sell you everything that we told before. If you're an industrial customer, you will buy your equipment, you will buy your whatever, and that is it. Then maybe you will buy maintenance on top, and maybe you will buy some customizations. But if you're talking about services, you want to sell subscriptions. You want to sell something that the customer sticks with, and you want to change radically the way you sell what you build. Now, this is really where the servitization comes into play. 
Because at the end of the day, if you need to revolutionize your business model, you need to revolutionize your product. And this is no longer a product. This is a service. I mean, we've been seeing a software as a service, uh, everything is a service, uh, something, something is a service, you're all sick and tired of it. But the reality is that all of these AAS uh, thing that we all see and we all talk about, it is really a shift in how revenues are built, in how cash flow works, because that's another big deal and another big topic. And most of all, in the way your product, your service is deployed and delivered to customers. That is a complete revolution in the way you pull things together. So I think that the real drive, and it's not really about technology, it's about the fact that companies, executives are seeing the possibility of changing the way they do business. And uh, maybe a few years ago, the market wasn't ready. Arguably, somebody will tell you the market is not ready today. But uh, as always, there is always, a, a, a let's say, a ladder of maturity, right, in which not everyone is ready at the same time. But from my own personal experience and looking at the market in general, I will say that uh, I've been surprised over the last month to see how many companies that you will not even think of are willing and actually ready to sell their stuff as a service. And you will be even more surprised to learn that their customers are willing to dive into that. So I think that there is a transformation going on that is happening is way faster than we can perceive from the outside. And uh, as the world evolves, as, as your consumer mind is influenced by the fact that you're buying subscription, you're buying Netflix, you're buying Spotify, you're buying everything, you're buying your car as a lease today, you're no longer buying a car, you're paying a lease. So everything is becoming a service in your own pocket. And now executives are starting to think that everything should become a, a service in their OPEXs rather than their own wallets. That is really the transformation at a management point of view that really drives this kind of idea of changing the way we sell stuff. And again, it's not because of the technology. Because of the technology, we can enable that. But it's because of the fact that the world is changing. The way we use our services is changing. The way we are building our products is changing and executives are changing the way they think. So that is real, the real driver, I think, of this revolution. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So basically, we, we, we sniffed this opportunity and said, okay, we want to be faster than others. So we bought uh, four small companies, including yours, created SecoMind and spent, uh, let's say, three years of work to develop CLIA. Basically, very simple uh, speaking, a software suite that allows customers to gather insightful data uh, from their on-field devices in real time through artificial intelligence. So we launched Glia early last year, and I would say it already had a pretty good return in terms of revenue and adoption rate from customers. Uh, walk us through how the platform was born, what's the business model, and let's say a few cases in which it has been already adopted. You really want me to talk for years, don't you? <laughs> I mean, you really, you really are testing. Uh, if I can, if your I can patience, be quicker. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really my patience, but I mean, there will be so much to say, right? And um, I, I do think it's it's really a unique project, uh, both in the way it has been built and in the way it has progressed. So, yes, we we built uh, Clear and Second Mind out of MNAs, and I think it is really important to mention that uh, the product was born out of existing assets because. Do not make the mistake of thinking that uh, Clia is just a few years old and it's not mature, it's not ready for prime time. The reason why we went for M&As and the reason why companies like mine were acquired is because we put together existing assets and joined them together to create a new product. This really gave us uh, the edge in making sure that we were building something that was already battle tested and ready for prime time. We already have a lot of deployments ongoing. And I have to say that, you know, since when we started the second mind of Ford, uh, the, the whole business has been booming and I don't really want to make a sales pitch here, but uh, as a matter of fact, and if you look at the sheer numbers, if you look at our financial results, I think it shows by itself and I don't even need to vouch for it because if you look at the numbers and if you look at how the IoT business has grown, it really tells you something about uh, the, the amount of interest we are seeing from the market, not just interest, but interest with orders and POs behind it. That I think it is really... Uh, the main thing that we should address. Now, as for the platform itself, it, it is pretty much uh, the synthesis of the vision that I explained before. It is a mean for companies to build their own services and transform their products into connected products first and into services they can sell to the end users that they have or the end business that they have. Because to us, it's not only B2B, to us, it's also B2B2C, which is a booming market. And uh, it is another thing that we cover quite widely and quite thoroughly 
with Clia uh, as a use case. And it's, it's, it's something very important to keep in mind because at the end of the day, the user of this platform could be you if you buy the right product and the right product is sold as an, to an end user. So this has to be really, really kept in mind. Um, and again, if I said before that uh, technology should not be the concern of who implements that, technology is our concern. And I do believe that uh, the technology we built uh, and pulled together with Clia, it is indeed something that is state of the art. And it's proven by the fact that we are seeing a lot of recognition also from developer communities. And uh, um, our, all of our customers are extremely, uh, let's say, satisfied to say the least about the technical things we put in place. And it's, we, really, we want to make life easier for developers. We want to make life easier for those who are going to implement our products. That uh, We want to make it easy for customers and partners who are going to build their next big thing on top of the platform. So we work daily for that. And I think we're doing a very good job because we see a lot of appreciation, which goes also beyond the financial statements, right? And, and, and this really can only be measured by going out in the field and asking, hey, are you doing? How do you like the product? How, what are you building? And we are starting to see customers building things that we didn't even think about, which I think is the best measure of success for these kind of products. And, and, and really it, it, is, uh, it is great and it is amazing to see traction picking up so fast in a way that I personally haven't <laughs> foreseen <laughs> would have been that fast. But on one hand, I think we're doing a very good job. On the other hand, I think we have a very cool product and the market is becoming ready. So, I mean, when you pull this together, uh, it is to be expected that you will grow faster than you initially thought. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, looking at the future, I think that we we recently announced right um, in our, um, in our quarterly results call, what's our vision for the future? And again, this vision is simply the one I, I mentioned at the beginning of this call. We want to become uh, an Apple store, an app store, not an Apple store, sorry, but of course, right? The inspiration is, is taken from the Apple store because we copy successful companies. We copy companies we believe uh, are cool. And Apple is really a cool company, which we believe as a great product. And so we want to bring that concept, that very same concept in the industry. Why? Because we believe that we are very horizontal today, but as our capability of going through verticals evolve, we will be able more and more to provide ready-made products, ready-made apps, which will not give you 100% of your end products, but will give you 90% of your end products, let alone your own customizations and your own look and feel. And it is something that really is gearing towards making it so that you can pull together a product and a service in a matter of weeks. <clears throat> Look at the Kamotsi uh, deal we just announced, right? This is a huge step in that direction. If you read the announcement, we are mentioning that we will be releasing a specific CLIA version tailor-made for the smart industry field. Now, that is just the first step towards the vision of putting together an app store in which not only smart industry, but smart buildings, uh, vending machines, the coffee world, um, many other verticals can be addressed. But most of all, you can address this market yourself, because we want to open up this ecosystem and make it so that developers, uh, software houses, system integrators, partner companies will be able to build and resell their applications on Clear. We want to become the technology enabler for an ecosystem that we are already building today, an ecosystem that generates value within itself. That is really our vision. That is really our goal. This is really where the company is going. And we are building this because we have an amazing team. We have amazing skilled developers and we have a very crisp vision for m and And as you have seen, I think that the bolt-on deals that we just made are really a testimony to the fact that we are very focused on that vision and we can't believe it. Because of course, we want to deliver this fast. We believe we have a market advantage. We believe we have an edge right now. And we want to make it so that this edge will be kept in the future. And I think that, you know, if we look at the last year or so, um, the, the deals that we pulled together and the deliveries we, we, we pulled together, the customers who jumped on our bandwagon are really the best proof beyond anything I can tell you in this call about how the strategy is working. So all in all, I think uh, that uh, we will pursue this strategy and the reason why Clia will become stronger is basically because I believe that uh, as the more we put together verticals, the more we put together use cases and the more we start partnering with companies to create complete solutions, the more the product will be appealing and the more customers will be able to implement it fast. Today, I think that the real goal we have is to make it even easier, even simpler, even faster to put your connected products into a service really ASAP. Great, great, absolutely. So, well, we have put together a lot of things in a very short time, but I think uh, 
this conversation has been very, very helpful to help uh, our viewers, financial practitioners understand a bit more what we are uh, developing into the IoT and artificial intelligence space. Uh, I think uh, we can wrap it up here, but maybe uh, in a short future, uh, update our viewers again with uh, a few more uh, good news with uh, what we are developing on CLIA. I, I just like giving out good news, you know me, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, to wrap it up, I think that, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you very much for having this conversation. Uh, I really, I really liked it, and I, you know, it's it's always good to be able to 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 share your vision and to to, to you know talk about what we're doing and what we're building. I think that you know, if you want me to wrap it up with the last message, I believe that uh, the the important thing to consider is that what we are building here is basically uh, something that uh, is driven by strong demand, is driven by crisp vision, and is backed by uh, the fact that it has been done before elsewhere. And I think this is super important when you consider the odds of success that something has to have in the future, right? Uh, so I, I really think and I hope that I, I gave you the crisper vision as possible about what we have in mind and what we're building. And, uh, you know, if you're looking out for our press releases, you're going to hear more and more customers jumping on CLIA in use cases that I really bet you will not think about. That's absolutely true. So thank you very much, Dario, for the chat. Brilliant as usual. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching us and looking forward to speak soon. Ciao. Ciao. Since you watched this company video until the end, I'm guessing you liked the video. That's probably because we work very hard to create the most engaging and value-added content possible for you. If you're a stock-listed company or corporation and want to find out how we at c Celebrity can make a company video with and about you, please email us at community at c